let your name sake be the reason why we glory in your presence today in jesus name amen amen so um as i said before we know the theme today is fire on the altar and there are references you will find many as to fire being on the altar especially in the book of leviticus as we look at the Levitical order, for those who don't know, go and read it. Joking. Well, yes, go and read it. <laughs> but um, I want to read Leviticus chapter 6, verse 7, verse 13. And before I do so, um, one of the uh, men of God that's going to follow me, um, Pastor Lumide Israeli Siave, he was one of the first people who shared with me that the book of Hebrews and the book of Leviticus have a correlation. Because as, as some of us will know, the book of Leviticus um, speaks about the priestly order, the Levitical order, hence its name. The book of Hebrews shows us Christ. I wrote some notes down today, so let me read those notes because I want to say this in the right way and I don't want to trip up on my words, so bear with me as I read these notes. Right. Yes, yeah, so the whole book of Hebrews describes Christ, Christ's priesthood. Um, a big portion of it does that. The book is even better understood when read alongside Leviticus, as I was saying. It's because Leviticus looks at the priestly office and how priests were to serve. So Christ as our high priest makes intercession for us daily and is our high priest forever. Hebrews 11 is also famous for the Hall of Faith chapter. And those people who mentions, you know, stop the mouths of lions, mentions Samson, Esther, um, it's all mentioned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, amongst others. Hebrews largely proves Jesus Christ's godhood at the start. It makes a different demarcation. We're going to go to that as well later. It marks him as higher than the angels, which we know, those of us who follow the Christian doctrine and education. It also describes him as the express image of God. It goes on to show how Christ is greater than all the prophets, the patriarchs, the servants of God that came before him, and any that would come after. It's a brilliant read, just like all the books in the Bible. Are. So I um, just wanted to lay that as a foundation before I read um, Leviticus 6, verse 13. As I was saying, that correlation was first highlighted to me by... Um, Pastor Lumide Israel Isiave, who will be, sorry, Pastor Israel Lumide Isiave, who will be speaking after me. So just to reiterate with what Pastor Luke was saying, there's a family affair here. There's many of us who know one another. Um, Pastor Lumide, who will be speaking before, I've met him at a uh, Men of a Fire conference before where he's spoken. Uh, we have kept touch online. And it's just us promoting that need for a relationship alongside what we do in the body. Um, yes, some of us don't speak as much as often as one another, but there has been something that has been built there with which we can use as a launch pad for coming to minister to you guys today. Leviticus chapter 6, I'll read from verse 10. Verse 10 says that, and the priest shall put on his linen garment and put his linen undergarment on his body, and he shall take up the ashes to which the fire has reduced the burnt offering on the altar and put them beside the altar. Then he shall take off his garments and put on other garments and carry the ashes outside the camp to clean to a clean place. This is where I'm going now. The fire on the altar shall be kept burning on it. It shall not go out. The priest shall burn wood on it every morning and he shall arrange the burnt offering on it and shall burn on it fat of the peace offerings. Verse 13, where I land, fire shall be kept burning on the altar, continue. It shall not go out. Now, this had to do with the priests and the offerings. There is more context, as I was saying. This is telling the priests how they are to serve. And if it says that the fire should not burn out, we know that these things were not just symbols alone, but they were spiritual realities. We are to keep burning for God. And the way we do that, not only in the New Testament, but in the day that we live in, 
is to be filled with the Holy Spirit. No man goes to war, no man goes to build a house without counting the cost. Nor should any man think to serve his God without seeing what is needed to extend, to maintain, to enforce, to live out that life whereby fire is always on the altar. We see in the book of Acts, at different points, it mentions that, and they were filled by the Spirit, and they were filled by the Spirit. And the Spirit of the Lord said, separate unto me Barnabas and Saul to do this work. And the Spirit of the Lord uh, led them after they had put uh, Matthias, and I forgot the other guy's name, um, they drew lots between them. And they were asking the Holy Spirit, they were asking God to help them decide who would take Judas's post. The fire on the altar for us is in us keeping in step and holding on to the Holy Spirit and following after God. Christ said that this helper would be the one who would bring us to remembrance of the things that we have learned. And I'm talking of the disciples in this case. And so it is for us. There are things that we read in the word of God that we don't remember. The things that we experience in our lives that we are not able to take hold of and go for ourselves. And it is the Holy Spirit, sorry everyone, it is the Holy Spirit that can help us to do this properly, that can help us to live out what God has asked us to do. Okay, so keeping fire on the altar, for me, look at 6 says, I'll read it again. Fire shall be kept burning on the altar, continue, shall not go out. This is what the Lord wants for us. The fire won't go out. But how do you do this practically? It's a life spent relying on the Holy Spirit. And Pastor Luke alluded to the fact of an accountability between myself and himself. And this is what you need because many of us sometimes go astray because we go off as lone rangers. God doesn't want you to be a lone ranger. You can be alone with God and pray, but there comes a time whereby you live out your life amongst other Christians, amongst other people, where we see good is spoken of you, where we see that you are interacting with the world, and you can be a witness for God in your spheres of influence. It's the Holy Spirit that will help keep us on the straight and the narrow. So tracking with me. We're going to go to Hebrews chapter 1. The book of Hebrews chapter 1. Remember, we're talking about five being on the altar. And we are going to get a description of whom Christ was and how he came, not just how he came to be, but how the writer of Hebrews is saying that Christ is more than the angels, greater than the angels, not to be compared to the patriarchs or the prophets that came before him because he is the author and the finisher of our faith. He's the express image of God. He's the one in whom we can put our hope in. And when it comes to keeping fire on the altar, there is none other than Christ our Lord himself who showed us how it should be done. So check this out and hear this everyone. Now, Pastor, just to let you know, um, you might want to prep the next speaker to come uh, through ready before the time or you get something ready. I just feel that there's almost, uh, I say that now, but let's see if I take up my whole time. I feel like God wants to speak a sharp and short word through me. I, I don't know why I'm feeling that way. So I just want to give you a heads up in case it goes that way. So me, uh, the Lord Christ, his holiness and transcendence is there when we look at him. He is for me holiness and he's also transcendent as God. And I just love the fact that we see this in Hebrews 1. I might get to Ezekiel chapter 1 as well. We see that too. And the key in me reading these scriptures is to highlight how you can look at God and position yourself and say, wow, if this is who my Lord is, then there must be something I do in my life to make myself available and keeping the fire, keeping the thought process, keeping the heart for God. The Holy Spirit helps with that. Verse 1 says, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1. Long ago and at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. In the last days, he spoke to us by his son. We're still in the last days. 
whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the world. He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature. This is the English Standard Version. The radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature. And he upholds the universe by the word of his power. He upholds the universe by the word of his power. Everything in existence. After making purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high having become as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to who of the angels did God ever say, you are my son, so they have begotten you. Or again, I will be to him a father and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, let all God's angels worship him. The Bible makes it clear that there is only one person to be worshipped, that is God. If Christ is receiving worship, this is talking about his godhood, the fact that he is God. Of the angels, he says, he makes his angels wings and his ministers a flame of fire. Christ is not a flame of fire. He is God. I'm uh, going to read the whole of it. It's only 14 verses. It's a short one. But of the son, he says, your throne, O God, is forever and ever. So of the son, he says, your throne, O God is forever and ever. The scepter of uprightness is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God your God has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions. And you, Lord, laid the foundation of the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the work of your hands. This is talking about Christ. They will perish, but you remain. They will wear out like a garment, like a robe. You will roll them up. Like a garment, they will be changed. But you are the same, and your years will have no end. And to which of the angels has he ever said, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet? Are they not all ministering spirits sent out to serve for the sake of those who are to inherit salvation? And this is where I stop reading the scripture. Sorry, everyone, just a uh, Get the attention of my daughter. Are you just uh, watching to hear me? Okay. She needs some help to open her bottle. There we go. Thanks for your patience, everyone. All right. So we see that this is another description of Christ. And there are many descriptions of Christ that I love. Uh, John chapter 1 is a great one. Revelation has so much imagery. Um, Ezekiel 1, talking about visions of God, is there as well. Isaiah seeing the Lord high lifted up on the throne, the train of his robe filling the temple. It's all there, but I've chosen this in particular because of this theme of fire on the altar. We see that it would mention of Christ that he would go and be alone with God to pray. He would invite the disciples to come with him to pray. There was a time he said that, come, let us go and rest. And what I'm trying to draw out is that if we are going to live a life where fire is always on the altar, we must recognize that it is not something that we can do of ourselves. We need to lean heavily on the Holy Spirit. And when you read the word of God, not just in the case of, oh, read my Bible, pray every day. No, when you read it to imbibe what it's saying so you can live in accordance to it. We've seen those verses there. It talks about Christ in verse 8. It says, your throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of uprightness is the scepter of your kingdom. If we are to tell people about the kingdom of God, one of the things that must be in our lives is uprightness. The Bible says that righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God. If his kingdom is that of uprightness, righteousness, our lives must mirror and show his kingdom. Priests could not offer offerings on the altar if they hadn't purged themselves of sins. That's why they went into the Holy Holy once a year and they had to have a preparation before they went to do that. Because if they didn't, the Lord in examining their life 
would strike somebody, a high priest, and he tied a rope around his leg so that if by any chance he didn't live, that high priest turned when it was time to go into the holies of holies that year, they had to pull him out because people wouldn't go into the holies of holies. Only the high priest was allowed to. And depending on who was the high priest that year, that person would go and serve. So back to us. If you're not looking at who Christ is and searching for others who are living like Christ, to have christ author relationships, we could end up living the gospel or living the word of God the way we want to. And it's where a lot of people have made shipwreck of their distance. Lack of accountability, lack of working and living with other Christians, a lack of bringing things to the table, not confessing sin before others, and not pursuing righteousness. It's so important in keeping the fire on the altar. It's so important in being filled with the Holy Spirit. See, the Holy Spirit does not stay in vessels of grieving. The Holy Spirit does not stay in places where there is no unity. We see in the book of Acts, in Acts chapter 5, the case of Ananias and Sapphira. Why did the Lord strike them? Because in that community they were in, they decided to break off and go on and do their own thing. Now, some people may have done what they did in certain communities and now struck down. But I've always said this. God is the same today, yesterday, and forever. Just because he doesn't deal with people like how he did before doesn't mean that people aren't being dealt with God or that he's not being patient with you for as long enough in order to have his day whereby retribution comes. There are other ways in which I believe the Lord is not just killing people in terms of he cut off a nice fire and they died physically. But the more and more you leave Zion, the more and more you leave the place of God, the, the, your Jerusalem, the place where God has apportioned you to be, the more you will find excuses to live a life that isn't dedicated to God. That isn't dedicated to service and that isn't dedicated to leading others in the way of God. And that's what Christ did. And he's our example. He always had fire in his altar. He was always in communion with God. That's why Christ could say, I do nothing. I don't see my father do. And without this fire on the altar, without sharing this with other men and making sure we're accountable, we will find ourselves drifting off and coming up with new doctrines or being swayed for those of us who don't preach or lead others by any type of doctrine. We must be careful. We must be mindful. The next thing I want to bring on here says that you have loved righteousness, it says, and hated wickedness. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. A land is exalted uh, righteousness exalts a nation, sorry, the Bible says. Sin is a reproach. Christ hates wickedness, so should we. Christ does not want to live anywhere where there's wickedness. Hence the psalm says, in your presence is fullness of joy, at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. No evil can stand where you are. Every day, the Lord is angry at the wicked. But the wicked have an opportunity to turn back and repent, rethink. That word pent there, I believe, it comes from a, a, a Latin and definitely from a French where it says pense. Je pense means I think. So to repent, the connotation there is to rethink what you are doing and go in the different direction, in the godly direction. And if we're to keep fire in the water, if we're to keep in line with the way of God, we cannot do life without other people living Christ-centered relationships. We cannot do it. Christ didn't do it, nor should we. You see this Bible that we have, the one that we venerate so much? Some of you have read it for over 20 years. And if you're honest to yourself, it hasn't changed your life. You know why? Apart from not practicing it with other people, you are not understanding it the way it should be. 
we're unfortunately have read it the way education taught us how to read books and summarize them and practice it. Not so with the things of the spirit. A large portion of our life has to do with us communing with God and communing with other saints. We prefer other saints first because they are walking in line of what we believe. And we hope that like in Antioch and many other places, people will see us and they will say, there is something about them. They are like Christ. We want to know what's going on or we want to join their community. This is why fire on the altar. This is why a life dedicated to God must be prevalent, must be consistent. There's got to be that person who will check in and check up on you to see that you're still in the faith. Yes, you examine yourself, but we must have those who will also stand in the gap with us. Take, for example, you've got people who can be ill or who can be sick. If someone doesn't say, hey, pray for me or pray for my, this person that they ill, how do others join in prayer? Once again, I refer to the book of Acts. Peter was in prison and they were praying for him. He was released by the angel whom God sent. He now came. The young lady, Rhoda, was so excited. She ran and said, hey, he's here. They said, no, it's his angel. He couldn't have come out already. They were praying and he was there at the door. Their prayer was answered. And until they were constrained by this girl to come, they didn't come to see what God had done. And sometimes that's all it takes for us having true Christ authored relationships with other people to see what God's doing. We can't do this in isolation. To maintain fire in the altar can't be done in isolation. God has set eternity in the hearts of men. The other thing, he has also placed us in family units, whether your brother, whether your son, whether your mother, father, husband, or wife, all of these constructs to make more godly and to extend what God wants to do. That's why we see in Genesis, the first thing he says to man is that be fruitful, multiply, so bear fruit, not only in physically giving birth to the children and the whole human and extended the human race, but put in them what I've said to you so that they can live like that. Men, women, teach your children to live like God so that they can keep fire on the altar. You know, teach them that they should confess their sins one to another so that sin doesn't have a hold over them. That in confessing sin, they dismantle the sin, they shame the sin, and they don't have to live with the stain. But Christ was their propitiation. Christ was the one who took on all of that sin so that they wouldn't have to live with the guilt. And love covers a multitude of sin. Teach them this, that rather than putting people when they're down, cover that person's sin. You know, when we are practicing this and living it out, this is how fire stays on the altar. This is all what Christ was asking for. This is all what God was saying, that if this fire is always on the altar, then I can have a people who are conscious of the fact they need to serve me. Because those animals, those bulls, those offerings, they couldn't crawl off the altar. They were burnt. But then they had to keep on bringing back an offering, a sin offering, a peace offering, and offering. But Christ did it once and for all. So we don't have to keep going and pouring physical fire and altars. Our temple must be kept clean and safe for the Holy Spirit. So my, uh, my, my, my thoughts and my hinting is correct. This is where I'm going to stop today. I do have 20 more minutes, but I really feel... This is the central of what God wants to do today. And I'm going to round it up with this. Uh, it says here that Christ was anointed with the oil of gladness beyond his companions. And this is the demarcation that is made between Christ, whom is God, whom the Hebrews, the Jewish people didn't believe was the Messiah. We do believe he's the Messiah. We are now occupying till he comes. If we are going to make sure, like the wise versions, we keep calling our land, it is for you and me to make sure, as I said earlier, that we don't live this life in isolation, that we live it justly before God and all other men. 
not so that we can tick boxes or tell everyone we're doing this, but it leads to a life of godliness. You can't live it on your own. And that's what I have to share with us today. I hope we were blessed. Uh, Pastor Luke, if you can come in and whether you want to do questions and answers for this last 20 minutes, I'd love to take people's questions in case they're coming through the chat. Or if you want to lead through some questioning to help people come more into the understanding. Let's do that. That's Luke. Guessing you're still there, sir. Ah, yes, sir. I'm still here. Wonderful. Good, good. So talk to me. Yeah, so, wow, that was really good. I was, you know, taking notes. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I was just so blessed with, with your teaching. Um, I'm just going to ask you a few questions before I let yeah. you go. Um, no so what advice can you give our men in this time of lockdown? How can, wh What can they do in order for them to plug in into God? Um, it's going to sound like a simple answer, but it's the same thing they were doing pre-lockdown, not in the sense that um, these aren't different times, because we know they are. But they plug in by making sure those people that they call their brothers, yeah. their sisters, that they're still relating with them. Like, for example, now we're on this platform online. If we didn't have the situation we had, we would have been in a building somewhere doing that. Make use of the platforms that you have, whether it's on phone, online and keep those relations going and practicing that because when you keep in touch with other people it exposes whatever is good or not so good in your life and when you share that as i was saying before that's what helps people stay on the straight and narrow when you're isolated you can do a lot of stuff yeah. i guarantee you there's many men who who and, and let's use the big one you know some men have been caught in the act of adultery They've been caught in the act of doing fraudulent things. If you actually told your fellow brother before you were going to do that, or your fellow brother's witness in that, let's assume that he's not one who's going to egg you on to do that. You might have found yourself not being in that picture. You would have sat down, talked about it. He would have talked you not only out of it, but brought your mind to the place whereby you are thinking the godly way of doing it. But when mm -hmm. you go off evil with people who are wicked and think like that, or you go off on your own, Mm -hmm. That's when we tend to not just douse the fire or grieve the Holy yeah. Spirit and walk away mm -hmm. from all things righteous. Right. There is a gentleman, I do believe, um, who, who sent this comment um, okay. that he said that he's finding it difficult after divorce for four years. Now, uh, now but see kids much been praying and fasting. Hope I can cope and find breakthrough soon. What would be your advice to this gentleman who just posted this comment? First and foremost, my heart goes out to you. Mm -hmm. um, I deal with people who go for divorce um, by God's grace. And I know the hurt and I feel the pain that they go through. But because I've not gone through it physically myself, thanks be to God, the Lord can give me empathy to be able to minister to them. So there's a dimension with which I can speak to this, uh, to Jehovah or this gentleman. And here's what I would say. There's a reason why God asks us to choose him first. When we have God central at everything, even if divorce comes, betrayal, um, sickness, loss of a child physically, whatever it may be, and in this case it was divorce, you are able to overcome and conquer because you kept Christ as your main thing. Now, practically as you've done today and i hope we can connect with this man pastor luke afterwards yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that we find out who are the christians around him mm -hmm. we make sure that that support is strong yeah so mm -hmm. that he can have somewhere where he can share his burden like he's yeah. shared it today because mm -hmm. when you share this burden we take it on with you and we don't let you feel lonely through this. Yeah, we let you yeah. strong while you go through this mm -hmm. so that mm -hmm. there's a hope for you to live 
a God-filled life mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. after the abortion. It's not the end of your life. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's happened, and it's possibly one of the most heartbreaking things you've gone through so far in your life. Mm -hmm. But because the Lord is still on the throne, and you mm -hmm. still have a duty to serve your God, we, as men in your community, can serve alongside you mm -hmm. and help you see that there's value and that God not only still wants to do things in your life, you can still be of use. Your story has an ended. Mm -hmm. It is difficult, but in you seeing the true purpose for why God made you, you will be able to put into perspective how you can march on mm -hmm. and still fulfill destiny. Yeah. No, that's that's fantastic. Thank you so much, sir. Um, that's very insightful. And um, for for the gentleman, like I I would just say as well, um, since you know divorce is something that's very very heartbreaking and it's devastating uh, to lose a spouse in that sense where you you get divorced. Um, one of the things that I can just even advise, like what what my brother just said, is just okay. to have a community of believers around you that will be a support system. We are happy to uh, to keep in touch with you after this uh, broadcast, and then yeah, we'll be able to 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 help you to support you either emotionally, um, spiritually, any way that we can help. We're more than welcome. You, you're more than welcome to reach out to us, and we're going to try to reach out to you uh, because that is the purpose of this kind of platforms we're not just here to just talk talk to people but we're here to actually want to hear what people are going through and 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 we see what the heart of god is concerning their issue and then we help them with with, with the tools that they actually need in order for them to overcome uh so uh that's that's just what i can um you know say at this point sure, in time awesome. and, may, yes. may i speak after you when you're done sir please yeah yeah go go ahead go ahead it's fine and he's mentioned about his children as well. Yeah. Right. Um, one of the things that we know is divorce affects the children sometimes yeah. a bit. I won't say a bit more than the than the than the husband and wife because it's still mm -hmm. heart wrenching for them, and we don't know yes. yeah. how this has happened. Mm -hmm. Please do allow me to be in touch with me because I work with children, mm -hmm. and we can support where that's concerned, so that you connect with people who will get you through that depending on what the situation is we've got to make sure that you stand stronger you stand tall in that situation and your children still see you as their father and a valued person in their life we mm -hmm. definitely want to see where that is so if hopefully you're serious about you know taking that to the next step to get in touch with us you can't have too much christian friends trust me christian family brothers and sisters there's no list that you can have too much because one day Christ is going to be there and we'll be there with him and we'll all be living mm. in the expert, perfect way that he intended it. Now mm -hmm. we occupy till he comes, mm -hmm. but he's coming soon where we'll live it in its fullness. So let's practice that. Don't ever think that in case you go to a certain local assembly or a certain ministry that you can't add to the, to the group of what you've got. You can add. We're here to serve mm -hmm. alongside you. Yeah, no, that's that's brilliant. I don't know if if there are other men out there that have got questions. You know, just just feel free to just post something, and we'll be able to assist in any way possible. Um, and this is one thing that I love about you know Men on Fire and some of the brotherhood that we have. You know, we 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 help each other out. You know, literally, like we want to be there for each other. Um, I think we we had one of our brothers as well who lost his fiance up two weeks ago. And you know, we're just trying to help them out, and you know, walk through them this 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 <clears throat> tough time. So when it's just not about ministry, a lot of people think that you know this is all about ministry. It's all about making a name for yourself. No, it's about people's lives that are being destroyed by the work of the enemy, yeah. and that's what we're trying to counteract. That's what we're trying to defend those people's lives through the word of God and ministration, like the teaching that our pastor just laid this this afternoon. You know, you did a, such a tremendous job to lay the foundation, and now we're looking forward to what other ministers are going to come and drop on this uh, broadcast. So, you know, uh, God bless you so much, Pastor Shepherds. Thank, Thank you so you, much for um, everything that you have shared today, that was quite in, in, you know inspiring and insightful. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna rewatch it again personally. So yeah, thank you. God bless you.
God bless you too. Thank you, possibly for you're welcome, your sir. You're welcome. All right. Thank you. You're all right then. Okay, bye. Bye bye. Bye. Okay. Wow. That has been something else. And I just want to advise a lot of you that are watching right now, you know, um, if you have any comment, any questions, just drop it in the comment section. We'll attend to it when the speaker finishes um, their, their sermon or presentation. Um, this is one of the things that I just want us to, to foster that kind of like um, attitude towards um, being online and doing something and then helping people out, um, answering their questions. So if you've got something that you just want to understand, just um, drop it down there and then we will discuss it. Um, now I'm waiting for my apostle, but I don't see him in the back room because Pastor Shepherd's finished quite early. So um, we're just going to give him a moment uh, for him to log in uh, and then we will carry carry on from there. But for now, I'm just gonna take a quick break. Let me see if I can put something for two seconds and I will be back. Okay. All right, everybody, welcome back. Uh, we're just taking a quick break. Um, and, you know, next up on the lineup is going to be one of the men that I honor. Um, you know, I've pastored under him. And right now he is doing an amazing job. Before I call him, I have to check online or to see if he's not online because he's one of the people that, you know, he's been a voice to our nation and our generation. And I'm looking forward to... Um, actually hear what he has to say today to all our men. Um, he is married to a beautiful wife and he's got two kids. I'm going to let him do the introduction uh, because, you know, I, I won't be able to do it justice. So without further ado, I'm just going to introduce our main man, <laughs> Apostle. <laughs> How are you doing, sir? I'm good. You know, I didn't. I forgot that I was slightly. Um, I was watching yeah. you guys on YouTube. I took a break right. for about two, three, four, five minutes at some point. Okay, so I forgot I was four, or five minutes behind. <laughs> <laughs> behind the broadcast, and then when I heard you say, uh, "Pastor Shepherds, thank you, bye," I was like, "Snap!" <laughs> Put the camera on. No, you doing, Pastor? Pastor? I'm, I'm all right, sir. Thank you. Good to see you too, sir. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Oh. If you guys, ignore me. Um, I'm doing this online because uh, some of you may not know. I literally am just recovering from about with COVID-19. Uh, I was fine. No hospitalization. Good. Uh, I didn't lose any senses. I didn't have any problems breathing. Uh, right. But it, it really takes a toll on your physical body and energy level. So... Uh, this is yeah. breakfast, and I just thought, let's oh, just be sure cool. that if I do get slain in the spirit on camera, <laughs> that it is 